one way to describe what I'm busy with these days and what I keep referring to when I talk with people as the current political climate, <laughs> I feel like I see myself as searching for frameworks for what's going on. I don't feel like I have an adequate framework right now. I have some accumulated frameworks that I used to rely on and now I'm questioning them. For instance, around the time of the election, for some reason, the historian Robin D.G. Kelly popped into my head and so I started watching, binge watching videos of Robin D.G. Kelly talking, reading very slowly Black Reconstruction by W.E.B. Du Bois, who has, among other things, in this huge symphony of a book, an analysis of why slavery and then the failure of the end of slavery, why that happened. And one aspect of the dynamic that he points out is that he identified three kinds of people in the South under slavery, uh, and he has a separate chapter on each. The planter owner, who owned the plantations, the black worker, and the white worker. The black worker has some kind of history that people in the United States learn in school, but there was a particular aspect of that history that he identified, which is their role in, in ending slavery. He says that they were the main ones who ended it. What's been curious to me is this chapter on the white worker these days, because his analysis is, is the, these white workers are not in a good situation. They are oppressed, but because of the division that slavery created, then they have a kind of a choice where they put their solidarity with the other workers or with the owners. And he says, tragically, fatally, they sided with the owners. And that kind of dynamic, that, that description, that framework that he came up with is coming back to me as, oh, maybe this explains something. Now, one other thing I just saw yesterday was a uh, lecture by Gayatri Spivak. According to her, Marx wasn't exactly trying to end capitalism. He was trying to have capital be used not for capitalist purposes, but for socialist purposes. Mm -hmm. And so her question that she emphasizes in the lecture is, okay, who is going to do this? Mm -hmm. Who is going to do this? So with these questions in mind, I've continued working on this collaboration with Snow Leopard and Susan and others uh, following an invitation from urban studies professor Faranak Miraftab to turn her book or somehow make her book into a theater performance. And the book is called Global Heartland and it's about migrant workers in Illinois. And I'm going to perform for you my two minute opera version. Oh, and, and then one other issue that this touches on is um, a notion I came across recently, and I don't remember who came up with this phrase, infrastructure of affect. You mentioned affect. And so I'm curious about creating or changing the, those infrastructures where people attach their emotions and don't, you know, do the opposite. They detach their emotions. And I see myself when I compose a piece as trying to connect my emotions to something else. And the, the work on the piece is trying to do that. So this is called Displaced Cradle, a two-minute opera in five scenes. And it involves several characters that I named Re, Mi, Fa, Far, So, and La. And there's T in there somewhere. Um, and um, so the first scene is between Far, a scholar and researcher from Iran, and So, a worker from Togo. So good to see you. Come in, come in. Let me take your... So, back from Togo. Yes, we brought. Good to see you. As we say in Farsi, we carry the scent from Togo. The scent, as we say in Farsi, the scent of your sons and daughter. Photos, of course. Photos, did you bring? <gasps> photos, photos. Well, let's have some... Oh, you shouldn't have... Why don't you... What a spread! Help yourself. <laughs> do you think... When do you think... Do you think you'll be able to... When do you think you'll be able to see your... First president fighting French colonial debt had the country issue its own currency. 
Okay. Three days later, assassinated by Frenchback, his successor installed for life, U.S. Cold War ally, until of course, and then the phosphate market bubble burst. Not putting foot on the table with your pharmaceutical degree. Might as well try the You Lucky Dog, the Cargill Company Lottery. You Lucky, but the visa's so confusing. Fees, papers, shots, tickets for the two of us. 10,000, pay you back as soon as you take care. So now we work pork, now we work pork processing side by side. Lo mei, Mitch Wakan, Detroit, insourced. No right language in common, outsourced. Except cold, hard pain everywhere. But with the baby it would have been too. Insourced, outsourced, who profits? Out, get lost, get gone. Go back to where you, you, you interlopers living high on the hog. Well, real Americans. I'm not used to this. I'm not either. I am. They're trying to get us used to this. If they can't get us used to this, we might, we might, we might. <laughs>